Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. I listen to the radio, to TV, uh, on a lot of church programs, to religious programs, Christian programs. And many times the pastor or the leader will talk about heaven, going to heaven. It would seem like the goal of a Christian would be going up to heaven. Would it not? Is that what you're learning? What will your what will be your reward? Will it be heaven or earth? This is an interesting question. We're going to look in, in it today. My purpose today is exp to explain what we will be doing for one seventh of all human history when Jesus Christ returns. One seventh of all human history. That's a 1,000 year period. Now, before we get started, we'd like to share with you two very important booklets. The first being, Easter, Is It Christian? Now it's right here. We have an Easter bunny on top of an egg. And it says, what do rabbits laying colored eggs have to do with the resurrection of Christ. Absolutely nothing. But in the introduction, when I was a youngster, I used to go to church on Easter Sunday. After services celebrating the resurrection of Christ, we would have Easter egg hunts. Supposedly, the Easter rabbit had laid. As I grew older, I often wondered what did a rabbit have to do with the resurrection of Christ? In mid-1945, I came across this booklet. It opened my eyes to the truth. I hope it will help you to have better understanding Tom Justice Pastor. And the second booklet is, What Do You Mean Salvation? And it says here at the bottom of the booklet, it says, Do you realize... Not one in a hundred knows what it is. When you receive it, don't be too sure you do. Here, once and for all, is the truth made so plain you will really understand it. What could be more important to you than your salvation? What will you be doing for all eternity? It's the most important question. What will you be doing for all eternity? Well, let's go to the Bible. We're going to understand the destiny of mankind. And in Matthew chapter 5 and in verse 5, Jesus says here, Matthew 5 verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Wait a minute. I thought the meek were going to inherit heaven. I thought the meek were going up to heaven. Jesus says here that they're going to inherit the earth. Wow. I guess Jesus is right. We're going to inherit the earth. Let's go to Matthew Chapter 24, the Olivet Prophecy here is one of the most important uh, discourses in the Bible. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See you not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown 
down. We're going to stop here for a moment. Now, Jesus Christ was being shown the buildings of the temple. You mean to, to tell me he didn't know what the buildings of the temple looked like? No, that wasn't the case. The case was King Herod had just finished a building program in which he beautified the buildings of the temple. They were absolutely breathtaking. If you saw that temple, it would be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Now, Jesus makes a prediction. You see this? See all these buildings? There won't be one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Had you lived back then, you would think this man was crazy, a crazy man. What do you mean? God will allow his temple to be destroyed? Are you kidding me? Well, within one generation, in 70 AD, the temple was destroyed. Uh, General Titus came with his legions, burned the temple down, and today there isn't any evidence up there in the Temple Mount of even one stone, let alone one stone upon another. Let's go back to Matthew 24. So he moved over to the Mount of Olives, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? What things? The destruction of the temple. Well, that was only going to be one generation later. And what will be the sign of your coming? Coming for what? Coming to rule. And of the end of the world. This word world is the word aeon. It's the Greek word, aeon, means age. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. He warned them four times in chapter 24 about deception. Are you being deceived today? If you were, you wouldn't know it because a deceived person doesn't know they're being deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. There's two ways we could read this. They're going to say that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ, and deceive many, or they're going to say that they are the Christ and shall deceive many. And that's happened many times. People came along saying that they were Jesus Christ and deceiving people and uh, others saying that Jesus was the Christ and deceiving others. Okay, we're going to drop down now to verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, just a witness. The gospel of the kingdom is, should be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We're stopping right here, and we're going to explain what the gospel of the kingdom is. I'm going to ask you first, what is your understanding about what is the gospel of the kingdom. It's got to be preached to all the world as a witness to all the nations of the world. So what is it? I'll hesitate for one moment. Gospel means good news. Whatever it is, is good news. Now, the kingdom, any kingdom, any kingdom must have four parts. Would you agree with me that a kingdom must have a king? Well, certainly. What would a kingdom be without a king? The second part is, 
It must have subjects that the king rules over. Would you not agree? Yes, you would. The third part of a kingdom, would you not agree with me? A kingdom must have a territory. King of France, king of Spain, king of Timbuktu, king of something, and it has a territory. Would you not agree? Yes. What is the fourth part of the kingdom? I always hesitate when I talk to people about the fourth part, giving them a chance to tell me what the fourth part of a kingdom is. I'll give you a hint. Any kingdom is a form of government. It's a form of government. What must the form of government have? It must have a set of laws. See, you could do this, but this is the punishment for doing that. So we, we need to know what, it, what the king expects of us because he rules by law. He's going to rule by a law. So let's go and drop down to verse 21. Jesus here is predicting end time results. And he says here in 21, verse 21, he says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. So we're talking about a three and one half year tribulation. Daniel talks about time, times, and half a time. And one time is one year. Times is two years and a half a year is six months. And the Bible talks about 42 months. That's three and a half years. And it talks about three and a half years of great tribulation. It's going to be greater than any other tribulation to this time, no, nor ever shall be, and except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. I have down here nuclear war. Nuclear war. The Bible predicts that one-third of all humanity in the book of Revelation are going to be destroyed. So with one-third destroyed, uh, if we're over six billion people, there's going to be about two billion people destroyed. Now that has never happened and with the nuclear weapons that we have, when I say we, I'm talking the nations of this world, have today, we could destroy this planet and 50 other planets just like it. Yeah, we could destroy it. Well, please don't go away. We're taking a short intermission and we will be right back. serious crush on my workout hip fun and always a challenge jazzercise is the total package it's the only workout that I've ever truly loved does it show that's because I'm in the best shape of my life what a difference jazzercise makes when's the last time your workout swept you off your feet find a class near you at jazzercise.com
Welcome back to the program. In case you tuned in late, the question today is what will be your reward? Will it be heaven or will it be the earth? And we're looking here in Matthew chapter 24 and in verse 24, let us read it. And here Jesus gives a warning. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. So when you see a miracle happening, that doesn't mean it's of God. In so much that if it were, that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So the very elect are going to be right down here during the great tribulation. They're not going to be up in heaven. They're not going to be raptured. They're going to be right here. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so also shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, verse 20, the verse 31. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. So the, the elect are going to be gathered together. Where are they going? Well, let's look in Revelation chapter 21. 20. Revelation chapter 20. Going to the book of Revelation, and we're in chapter 20. And here we see verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is 21. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there were no more sea. Well, we're going to show you here uh, verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So we do end up in heaven. That's true. But Revelation chapter 20 comes before chapter 21. Let's read that. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain, in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and satan and bound him a thousand years why why is he binding satan for a thousand years well let's read it and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. God is not done with him yet. God is going to loose him after the thousand years. We're going to explain that at a future time. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. This hasn't happened yet, but it will happen pretty soon. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years years. Where at? Are they reigning with Christ in heaven or are they reigning with Christ down here on the earth? 
Well, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 tells us. Let's turn there now. Revelation 5, verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. We're going to be kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. Wow. Let's stop here for a moment. We're going to reign for 1,000 years down here on the earth before we go up to heaven or before heaven comes down to us. The Bible says heaven is coming down. Not, not necessarily we're going up. So, 1,000 years is one-seventh of all mankind. What's the purpose? Well, the first 6,000 years are man's rule on this earth. God basically has hands off, basically. He will intervene when it serves his purpose, but he basically has hands off. He lets man choose their own leaders. He lets men choose their own educational systems their own banking systems, their own laws, their own rulers. He lets man choose a lot of things. Man is a free moral agent. He can choose. Where has it gotten us today? Well, it's gotten us to the point of getting ready to blow ourselves up to kingdom come. Nations that have nuclear weapons, do you trust Iran? Do you trust China? Do you trust the crazies in North Korea? Do you trust Russia? Do you trust any of these? How about Iran? Do you trust Iran with the nuclear weapons? No. No. Unless Christ intervenes. Jesus said it in Matthew 24. Unless he intervenes and cuts that time short, that no flesh would be alive. As it is, one-fifth of all mankind, one-third of, I'm sorry, one-third of all ma mankind are going to be destroyed. Some over two billion people are going to lose their lives. Wow, that's incredible, isn't it? Let's go now to Isaiah chapter 65. We're going to get a peek at the millennium. We're going to look here at the thousand year period that's going to take place here on this earth. It's going to be a beautiful time after Christ returns and sets up his government, his government over this earth as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's read it, Isaiah chapter 65, and let's look in verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. So this is talking about him creating the new heavens and the new earth. Well, watch here. But be you glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Is that true today? No. There shall no be there no more there an infant of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. This is beautiful. God is going to bring this about a thousand years of peace here on this earth, under Jesus Christ's rule. 
He's going to rule. The saints are going to rule with Jesus Christ for that 1,000 year period. Well, we have an interactive Bible study we'd like to invite you to. It's uh, on sun Saturday at one o'clock at the meeting room at 1701 East Missouri. One o'clock, bring your Bible, a notebook and a pen, bring your questions, we'd be glad to answer them. And here's the booklets that we have. We have the Easter, is it Christian? And we have the booklet, what do you mean salvation? The most important thing in your life is your salvation, don't neglect it. Well, for these free booklets, call the number on the screen. We'd be happy to send you a DVD of this program for free. There's no cost, no obligation. Well, folks, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.